Hello and welcome to A, A Couple, Couple Codes. Codes. My name is Emily. And my name is Cody. And we've been coding with the Odin Project for six months. Oh yeah. Yes. So today we're going to give you an update on where we are. So Cody, where are you in the curriculum? So I'm still working on my final JavaScript project. It's building a Century Lexicons website. So it's actually creating a new website. And yeah, so I'm working on that and building out some features. Cool. What's been significant that you've worked on this week? So this week I've been focusing on what's the real value of this application that I'm making. And I've stepped into making a view lexicon feature which is going to be one of the, the main aspects of the application that the user's gonna use after they've uploaded their data. So last week I was focusing on importing, allowing the user to import their own data and upload it manually and also with a, a file uploader. This week it's actually what happens after that so they can then view the lexicon and specifically trying to do it in a way that's accessible to the user. Mm, okay, what's been most challenging? I would say making it accessible and actually managing the complexity of a sensory lexicon. So sensory lexicons have attributes and attributes can have multiple references. So there's a hierarchy to a sensory lexicon mm -hmm. and it can be a lot of information, especially there are companies that have hundreds and hundreds of attributes within their own like databases. And usually mm -hmm. sensory scientists are working in like Excel workbooks with this kind of data. Mm -hmm. So it's trying to reduce the complexity down into to bite-sized chunks so that they can interact with their sensory lexicons in a way that's efficient, but allows them to dig a little bit further into the complexity and manage that kind of on their end. So what I'm making is a, a table that has expandable rows and the rows themselves are sensory attributes. So it's attribute, definition, sensory modality, and then you can click on the row mm -hmm. and it'll expand down, give you additional information like date modified, date added for the sensory attribute and then it'll actually have another table that will have the sensory attributes references as well. Do you have to click again to open that other table? No, I've, I I um, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to make that one expandable right now. I do need to think about like, okay, so they can view the table. What are they going to do with the table? Mm -hmm. And that'll be like a feature for allowing them to select attributes and maybe select references that they want to download uh, in some sort of workbook or in like a report kind of format. But right now, with the references table it's just listing out all the data for the references and not having like more expandable rows um, that might be a feature to like view the reference like go to a specific page for viewing the details of a reference oh. um, there's also other things like with this create react data table that I'm using the one uh, interesting aspect of it is you can like add like a button to a row to like make it then like an example would be making it into like an input for each one of the values in the row so then they, they could like uh, edit it in place. Yeah. Um, or I could, like I said, have something that will send them to a specific reference page so they can view the complete information for the references. Uh, but I think having it all, like having expandable tables within expandable tables might be a little bit too much. Uh, but I mean, it's something I could play around with um, and, and see how it just looks. Um, but yeah, I'm just tinkering with that right now. So Expandable inception. Yeah. <laughs> Recursion. So what was your favorite thing that we did this week? Oh, I forgot. Yeah. Last night we... We um, went to our first local tech meetup and yeah, we had a really good time. We got to, uh, there's a pretty good uh, turnout apparently. Mm -hmm. uh, it was our first time, so we didn't really know, but there was a lot of people that were apparently regulars and have been doing this for a while. And it was nice because we got to actually start talking to people that understand what we're doing uh, in regards to like what we're building and the technologies that we're using. Um, so that, yeah, that was really nice. Yeah, that was neat. And one of the people actually knew about the Odin project, so it was cool to be able to relate with him about that. So we're definitely going to go to the future ones, but it was a good time. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting to know people a bit more and, and kind of getting out of our little bubble of Odin Project <laughs> and, and the videos. I, I love doing these videos and I love the Odin Project, but it's definitely important to get out there and, and socialize a bit, get talking with people. Yeah. So, so Em, what have you been working on? Well, I finished my Battleship Project. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And then I finished the intermediate Git section, which was just some lessons that go into more depth about 
how to use best practices for using Git and some of the more advanced features with it. And then I started learning React, which I'm really excited about. Yeah, React's great. <laughs> yeah. 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 I remember when I first like started learning and everything, and I was like, it was like, mm, it was really good. <laughs> I remember you talking about it. So I've like, I've been looking on my JavaScript pathway for when I got to that section. And once I reached it, I was like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it has not disappointed. Yeah. yeah. So what's something significant that you learned this week? A little something called called Create React App, mm. which is a way to create a full React app with just one command in your terminal, which is super neat. So the very first- Very nice, very handy. Yeah. You're creating things really quick. Yeah, because you used it for your JavaScript. Oh yeah, I'm Final JavaScript project. Final yeah. JavaScript project. And apparently there are other things out there. I haven't learned about them, but- Other- Yeah, other things like things Create React similar App. similar to that? Oh. Uh, um, but they're like more tailored to specific UK, so- Oh, that's interesting. Interesting to think about. Uh, yeah, so that was really neat because on my first day of learning React, I got to make a full React app. And it's pretty cool how it sets it all up. And it does consolidate the work that you have to do with configuring everything. So that new project guide that I have on GitHub, I can skip over like most of those steps now if I just create a React app. And I just have to make sure I configure like ESLint and Pretty or anything like that that I want to use. And then I'm also using Create React App for a mini project that I'm doing right now, which is essentially just practicing some of the lessons that we've learned just in this initial React section to create a task app that has an input field, and then you can write in a task, and then it will populate that task on the web page as part of a list. Cool. Yeah. Any big challenges this week? I think the biggest challenge was just the beginning of the React section was a lot of new information at once. And it was also shifting from doing more intensive project work to doing a lot of reading about new concepts mm. and like learning a slightly new syntax. So information overload. Yeah, it's a lot to process at once, but I am excited that I'm doing this like mini project now because it things make a lot more sense once you're actually doing it yourself so yeah. i appreciate that definitely first time i read through the kind of main react articles it was like i didn't get everything but after starting to do projects and using it and then going back when i find errors that i don't really understand but i know that there's like a concept there that i could read about going back and reading was very very helpful and understanding mm. things especially things like hooks and stuff which i don't i don't think you're there yet but no i got like a very brief introduction but yeah uh i needed that for hooks and side effects stuff i still don't know them 100% like everything about them, but it did help to go back and read after actually implementing them. So something else interesting is that React is actually updating their documentation. I don't know if you've seen this, but the documentation that is linked to from the Odin project, there's a little box at the top of the screen that says that those articles are going to get archived and they're getting replaced with this new React.js beta documentation that they link to. And- yeah, I think I remember seeing that. Yeah, so I, I was using the new documentation and it was a little bit like different organization from what the Odin project linked to. So I was trying to make sure I was still kind of catching up with where they wanted me to be. Mm -hmm. So I guess that was another kind of challenge with it. But the new React documentation is really good. They have a lot of illustrations and little code along practices and challenges. So I like that. Well, that is all that we have time for today. If you are currently completing the Odin project, feel free to pop a comment below introducing yourself or just saying hi if you enjoy these updates be sure to hit the like button and if you'd like to follow along on our web dev journey be sure to subscribe to our channel thanks for tuning in to a, a couple, couple codes, codes. <clears throat>